Number 304 in your hymnal, 304, not have I gotten, but what I received. I'm only a sinner saved by grace. Let's all stand together if we can on that first together. Not have I got time, but what I received. Grace has included Right, I am I'm only a sinner saved by grace. Only a sinner saved by grace. Only a sinner saved by grace. This is my story. To God be the glory. I'm only a sinner saved by grace. Once I was foolish and sinned. singing this morning. I'm glad I'm a sinner saved by grace. And uh, we're all sinners. Amen. And uh, But either you're a saved sinner or you're still a lost sinner. Uh, but that's what sometimes the sometimes those who don't know Christ have a difficult time with that. You know, the recent thing in the news with the Duggar family. You know what? We're, we're all sinners. But we also believe we can be forgiven sinners. And God forgives, and uh, we, we move on. And uh, God not only forgives us, He justifies us. And uh, I won't preach a sermon now, but uh, we'll get one later. And uh, good to see you here this morning. Thanks for being in church today. Let's open with a word of prayer, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, we do bow before you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and for your grace. Thank you for the love that drew salvation's plan and for the grace that brought it down to man. The mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Thank you for dying for our sins and being buried and rising again the third day. You're alive, Lord, and we believe you're here this morning. And Lord, you're able to save all those that come unto God by you. And I pray you draw those in this room today that do not know you as their Savior. Draw them to yourself today. I pray Christ will be exalted. We pray that you'll be glorified today, God. May you bless every aspect of this service. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. 249 together in your hymnal. 249. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget. Let's sing that first all together. Oh, what a wonderful day.
my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, and glory filled my singing this morning. Wow. And a few announcements for us. Listen carefully. We'll have our regular schedule today, 5.30. We'll meet our Christian growth class uh, down in the conference room right across from the nursery. And uh, pick up tonight. Our lesson will be on the Bible. Our theme for the month of June is the Bible. Every month we have a different theme we're going with this year in our 60th year. And uh, we'll be talking about uh, just tits for this night on the Bible being the Word of God. And then tonight for 6.30 for the evening service, we'll be back here in the auditorium. And Lord willing, tonight I'm going to talk about two foundations, two foundations. So everybody builds their life upon something, and uh, there's two different foundations you build your life upon. And so we'll find that out this evening uh, in the 6.30 service. Ladies, a week from tomorrow is your ladies' night out. Uh, it is going to be a, a week from tomorrow. That would be the 15th of June, one week from tomorrow, okay? You could come tomorrow, but you'd be awful lonely, and uh, you could be there. And uh, Ann Moreland's going to be speaking at that meeting, and so you'll look forward to that, the fruit of the Spirit. There's a sign-up sheet for that downstairs, and uh, ladies, sign up for that. And then, fellas, remember on the 20th is our father-son barbecue, and uh, that's for all men and, and boys. You come on out and be part of that. Uh, $7 for the men, $5 for the guys 12 and under. Uh, because that's a steak dinner, fellas, all right? And uh, we're going to have a great time. Always have steak and baked potato and uh, always a balanced meal. Steak, baked potato, and brownies. That uh, doesn't get any better than that right there. So, uh, and, and we'll have that. We'll have a great time together. And uh, Brother Jarvis is going to be speaking at that meeting, and we'll look forward to hearing from him on the 20th, all right? Okay. We want to take a moment now and welcome any guests we have with us today. Stephanie Paz, good to see you. And Bella, I could not recognize you. I thought, boy, who is that girl? But I've seen your picture enough to remember. Good to see y'all. When would you get in? Great, great. Welcome to Ohio. And uh, they're, what do you call people from New Mexico? Out of place. And uh, yeah, huh? come on. And uh, good to have you back. Good to see you, too. That's great. Are the other girls with you? Oh, okay. I'll fix that. Yes, yes, again. Need Andy to come in and wake them up, huh? Amen. Good to see you today. That's great. Wonderful. Thanks for being here. Anybody else here this morning for the first time? I'd like to meet you, find out who you are and where you're from? Got right here. Okay. Who do we have here? Mary Hammonds. Wonderful. Great. Good. Thanks for coming this morning. Now, are you from London? Yes. You live in London as also? Okay. Right beside you. All right. Live beside him. Sit beside him in church. Can't beat that. All right. And uh, praise the Lord. Thanks for coming this morning. Delighted you're here. All right. Is anyone else here this morning that we can meet for the first time? I think he's been here before. You, you Christian, you had your friend here before, didn't you? Amen. Good. And uh, thanks for coming back. Okay, if you'll take just a minute and fill out the visitor card, we would appreciate that. And a little bit, we have an offering. Just put that card in there if you would and keep the pen as our gift to you for coming. We're glad you're here this morning. Let's give our guests a warm welcome, shall we?
friend and you are my brother even though you are a king. in your hymnal 411 I have a message from the Lord hallelujah it is only that you look and live 411 we'll sing that first third and last together I have a message from the Lord Five hundred twenty-three, five two three. I have a flag to follow. Five two three. Let's stand together as we sing. Five two three together. I sought a flag to follow on that first. I sought a flag to follow. A cause for Great one another. Make somebody feel welcome. Especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
I found them all in Jesus, the life, the truth, the way. Beneath his flag I'll take my stand and follow him today. Let's sing that last together. I sought for satisfaction for yearning deep within. Sing with me if you would. I sought for satisfaction. I sought for full deliverance from chains of guilt and sin. I sought for peace and pardon, for freedom from my fears. I sought a hope to cling to beyond these passing years. I found them all in Jesus, the life beneath his flag. I'll take my stand and follow him today. Amen. Great singing. You may be seated. Ushers will come and they'll get our offering now this morning. Pray for our uh, nursing home ministry. They'll have a service today, first Sunday of the month, and uh, Brother Wright preaches those uh, services on Sunday afternoon, and uh, several folks in the church here that go and help and be part of that service. That's a great ministry, and uh, we appreciate those who labor on the Sunday afternoons and go to the nursing homes. And I'm going to ask Brother Wright lead us in our prayer for the offering this morning. Let's pray. Father, your love is amazing. And I just pray, Father, that each one in this room would continue growing in their knowledge and understanding of who you are. That they not be timid or ashamed to tell people about you, Father. Amen. That they serve you faithfully and joyfully. And in all that they do, they exalt your name. I pray, Father, that we be God-centered and not self-centered. That we not be so concerned about creating an image as we are in setting an example. That we obey the word rather than seek the approval of others. That we value our relationship with you, Christ Jesus, as more important than anything else. Father, we love you. And I just pray that everybody in this room would be a reflection of your light to a lost and dying world. Father, the world just cares about fame and fortune and the love of money, but just give me more Jesus. Father, I love you, and I just pray that you would be with the pastor now as he opens up the only book you've ever written. Fill him with the Holy Spirit, Father. Speak through him and use him, and we'll thank you for it. We love you, Father. Without you, we're nothing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen.
Take your Bible this morning, if you would, for our scripture reading to Isaiah chapter 45, please. Isaiah chapter 45. Three verses I want to look at this morning. We'll read verses 20, 21, and 22. We'll read verse 20 together. I'll read verse 21, and then let's join together and end on verse number 22. And as our custom is, let's stand together for the reading of the Scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's Word. And let's begin together on <clears throat> verse 20 of Isaiah chapter 45. Ready? Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of the Scripture now this morning. We thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. Thank you for preserving your Word, that we may hold copies of it in our hands this morning. And Lord, I pray that each of us would be eager and ready to hear what the Spirit would say to His church this morning. Pray our hearts would be good soil that the Word of God can fall into and bring forth fruit in our lives. So, Father, use the special now to prepare us. In Jesus' name, amen. Face to face with Christ my Savior, face to face what will it be when with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ who died for me. I shall behold him far beyond the starry sky, face to face in all his glory, I shall see him by and by. Only faintly now I see him with the darkened veil between. But a blessed day is coming when his glory shall be seen. What rejoicing in his presence when our banished grief and pain, when the crooked ways are straightened and the dark things are made plain. Face to face I shall behold him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all his glory I shall see him by and by. Face to face, oh blissful moment, face to face to see and know, face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who loves me so. Face to face I shall behold Him, far beyond the starry sky.
Our Heavenly Father, we bow before you in prayer now as we come to the preaching of your word. We're thankful for the wonderful promise that one day we will see your face. Father, we're thankful for the wonderful, the blessed hope that we have that one day we'll see the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Father, I ask for your help this morning as we come to the preaching of your word. Lord, I need your help as I bring the truth this morning. And I pray you'd help the people as they listen to the truth today. As I desire to be filled with the Spirit as I bring the message, I pray the people would be filled with the Spirit as they listen to the message. That your will will be accomplished in each of our hearts and lives this morning. So Lord, help us all to give our utmost attention and our respect to your precious word this morning. We love you. We ask you to speak to us today, and we ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Isaiah 45 and verse 22, if you have your Bible open to that verse, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. The the famous preacher Charles Haddon Spurgeon was converted by that verse. Um, Charles Spurgeon, if you're not familiar with him, he's called the Prince of Preachers. Um, probably has more sermons published and in books than any preacher ever. And let, let me read to you his account of what happened the night he got saved. He said, I sometimes think I might have been in darkness and despair until now had it not been for the goodness of God in sending a snowstorm one Sunday morning. While I was on my way to a certain place of worship, I turned down a side street and came to a little primitive Methodist church. In that chapel, there must have been a dozen or possibly 15 people. He said, now I had heard of the primitive Methodists, how they sang so loudly that they made people's head ache. But that did not matter to me. I wanted to know how I might be saved. The minister did not come that morning. He says he was snowed up, I guess. At last, a very thin-looking man, a shoemaker, a tailor, or something of that sort, went into the pulpit to preach. Now, it is well that preachers be instructed, but this man was really stupid. This is Spurgeon speaking. He was obliged to stick to his text, for the simple reason that he had little else to say. The text was, Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. He did not even pronounce the words rightly, but that did not matter. There was, I thought, a glimmer of hope for me in that text. The preacher began this way. This is a very simple text indeed. It says, Look. Now, looking doesn't take a great deal of pain. It ain't lifting your foot or lifting your finger. It's just look. Well, a man need to go to college to learn how to look. You may be the biggest fool, and yet you can look. You don't have to be worth a thousand a year to look. Anyone can look. Even a child can look. But then the text says, look unto me. I, he said in a broad Essex, many of you are looking to yourselves, but no use looking there. You'll never find any comfort in yourselves. Some say, look to God the Father. No, look to Him by and by. But Jesus Christ says, look unto me. And some of you say, well, I must wait for the Spirit's working. You have no business with that just now. Look to Christ. The text says, look unto me. Then the good man followed up his text in this way. Look unto me. I'm sweating great drops of blood. Look unto me. I'm hanging on the cross. Look unto me. I am dead and buried. Look unto me. I rise again. Look unto me. I ascend to heaven. Look unto me where I sit at the right hand of the Father. O poor sinner, look unto me. Look unto me. When he had managed to spin out about ten minutes or so, He was at the end of his tether. So he looked at me under the galley, and I dare say with so few present, he knew me to be a stranger. 
and fixing his eyes on me as if he knew all my heart, he said, young man, you look very miserable. Well, I did, but I had not been accustomed to have remarks made from the pulpit on my personal appearance before. However, it was a good blow, for it struck right home. He continued, and you will always be miserable, miserable in life and miserable in death, if you don't obey my text. But if you will obey now, this moment, you will be saved. Then lifting up his hands and shouting as only primitive Methodists could do, Young man, look to Jesus Christ. Look! 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 You have nothing to do but look and live. I saw at once the way of salvation. I know not what else he said. I did not take much notice of it. I was so possessed with that one thought. I'd been waiting to do 50 things, but when I heard that word look, what a charming word it seemed to me. Oh, I looked until I could almost have looked my eyes away. And there and then a cloud was gone. The darkness rolled away. And at that moment I saw the sun. And I could have risen that instant and sung with the most enthusiastic of them of the blood of Christ and the simple faith which looks alone to Him. Oh, that somebody had told me this before. Trust Christ and you shall be saved. It was, no doubt, all wisely ordered. And now I can say, ere since by faith I saw the stream, thy flowing wounds supply. Redeeming love has been my theme, and shall be till I die. That happy day I found the Savior and learned to cling to His dear feet was a day never to be forgotten by me. You know, the eyes are the main gate into our soul. And you know, just one look can be life-changing. One look can be a powerful experience. Don't raise your hand, but some of you might say that you experienced love at first sight. Some of you might have felt like you should have taken a second look. But I want you to consider this morning the, the power of one look. The power of one look. And we're going to look at some, some scriptures in the Bible, so get your Bible ready, all right? I want you to see some things about one look as we look at the Bible this morning. Genesis chapter 3. Would you look there, please? First book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. And we're going to find out that just one look can bring condemnation. Just one look can bring condemnation. Most of you are familiar with Genesis 3, verse 1, where the Bible says, The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know, in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. She looked, and she took. She looked and she took, and she lost her place in the garden. She was deceived, and all it took was one look. One look to bring the deception that Satan wanted her to have. Adam came along. Adam saw what happened. And, and Adam, Adam went into sin, I believe, with his eyes wide open. He knew what had happened, and he went, I believe, because of his love for Eve. And, and one look is all it took. Go a little further in the book of Genesis to chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. Another look of condemnation that brought condemnation. 
What's happening in Genesis 19 is God is answering the prayer of Abraham and uh, really even in, in, in showing grace to Abraham because Abraham only got down to ten righteous. And there weren't ten. There was Lot and his wife and two daughters. That's only four. But God was gracious and let them escape. But the command in, in Genesis 19 and verse number 17 it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, he said, Escape for thy life. What's the next four words say? Look not behind thee. Don't look back, right? Neither stay thou in all the, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. So they take him out. And verse number, uh, let's see here. The, the Lord reigned. Verse 24, Upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Warned not to look back and warned never to, to, to take a second look or even the first look back. And she turned and looked back and was condemned and selfishly and, and forever turned into just a pillar of salt there in the wilderness for all to see. By the way, that, that, was, that, that was a result of a selfish choice her husband made years earlier when he made the decision to go towards Sodom and Gomorrah. He paid a dear price for that. Because he, and by the way, you remember why he chose Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah, it looked good. He looked and said, man, that's where I want to go. Condemned by a look. Isn't that what happened with Achan and the, the AI deal after Jericho? And Achan said, and you look it up in Joshua 7, he said, I saw, I coveted, and I took. And he took that gold and he took the garment and he hid it under his tent until uh, then they, by the way, 36 men lost their lives at AI and a defeat for the children of Israel. And, and Achan paid dearly for his sin. One look. I think about David. When it was a time for kings to go forth to battle and David tarried still at Jerusalem. 2 Samuel chapter 11. And while he's staying there in Jerusalem and all the other men are out to war, David takes a walk and he sees a woman bathing. And all it took was one look for condemnation to come. You know, looking is a slippery slope. It's, it's, it, it, someone likened it to if you've ever gone on a huge water slide. Maybe you climbed all the way up there and you got up there and you thought, man, I'm not sure I want to do this or not. Guess what? It's too late now. And then you get on that thing and you start going down. You think, what in the world was I thinking? But you know what? You can't go back now. You've got to close your eyes and hold your breath and hang on for dear life. You know what? That's what happens when you look. You cannot stop it. You won't be able, you're going to get on a slippery slope and you'll know, you, you won't believe where the consequences could lead you. David surely couldn't. But he chose to go down that slide. He chose to go down that direction. And he couldn't stop the consequences. James says this, that when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. That's the LSD, the lust, the sin, and the death. It's the most dangerous form of LSD. And that's how it happened for David, and he had a baby die as a result of it. Men, a warning to you, because men are very visual creatures. You have to set up the safeguards in your life. Job said this, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? You need to make a covenant, man, with your eyes. You need to make a covenant about what you're going to look at on that computer. You need to make a covenant what you look at on your phone. You need to make a covenant with what you're going to watch on your television. But by the way, you need to make covenant just with where you look, period. And you need to make a covenant with your eyes and make sure that you're not going to let one look bring you to condemnation. It'll do it. It'll do it. 
So one look can bring condemnation, but there is good news. One look can also bring justification. One look can bring justification. Go to Numbers 21, will you please? Numbers chapter 21. In Numbers 21, you, the children of Israel have been grumbling and complaining as they were prone to do, murmuring and not, not exhibiting much faith in God. And God begins to judge them. The way God judged them was He sent snakes in them to bite them and to kill them. And what He had Moses do was, verse number 8, The Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So Moses fashioned that serpent, and if the, if the serpent, if they would just look to that serpent lifted up on the pole, they would be healed of their snake bite. All they had to do is look. And by the way, that was a picture of Christ being lifted up on the cross. You say, oh, you're stretching that, aren't you? No, that's what Jesus said in John chapter 3. Jesus said, even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And then He said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And there's a picture in His death and what He'd do when He died on the cross. And all who look to Jesus can live. Hey, the way they were cured from their snake bite is the same way that you and I get cured from sin. Hey, it's looking to Jesus. It's looking unto Him who died for your sins. That's why He was on the cross. He was paying for your sin and for mine. He didn't say, look to the pole. He didn't say, look to Moses. He didn't say, look back to the Red Sea. He, it, listen, don't look at the wrong thing this morning. There are multitudes of people that are looking to the wrong thing for salvation. And it'll never save you. Don't, that, by the way, don't look to a church. I'm, I'm glad you're a Bible Baptist church, but you could sit in this church every single service from now until you die, and you could still die and go to hell. The church doesn't save you. The baptistry won't save you. We'll be baptizing somebody this morning because of their faith in Jesus Christ. But if you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, I can baptize you to your skin wrinkles. It's not going to save you. Don't look to the baptistry. Don't look to the communion table. Don't look to your confirmation. Don't look to what Mama said. Don't look to a saint or to Mary. Don't look to morality. Don't look to sincerity. Well, I'm sincere about it. Yeah, but don't you settle for sincerity. Be sincerely right. You want to be right about it. And so make sure that you're looking in the right direction. Look to the Lamb of God. Look to Jesus Christ. For He alone is willing to save you. Look to the Lamb of God. We sang, Look and live, my brother live. Look to Jesus now and live. It's recorded in His Word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. That's what we're talking about. That's how you get justified. And don't, don't think, don't, don't complicate it. Don't, don't try to make it difficult. You say, was it hard? Yeah, it was hard on Jesus' end. It's not hard on our end. He, he did the hard work so we could have the easy work. And it's just believing on Him. Looking to Him. One look can bring condemnation. One look can bring justification. But listen carefully this morning. One look can bring sanctification. Sanctification. Look at Matthew chapter 17. Would you look there please? First book of the New Testament. The book of Matthew. And chapter 17. Matthew 17. You have what's called the Mount of Transfiguration. It's a... It's Jesus taking Peter, James, and John up into the mountain and allowing them to see Him in His glorified body. Allowing them to see who He really was. The Bible says in verse 1, After six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, His brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. And He was transfigured before them, and His face did shine as the sun, and His raiment was white as the light. 
And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Elias is Elijah. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Boy, that's an understatement, isn't it? If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. Oh, Peter, you shouldn't have said anything now. And while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son. Now listen, you just heard the voice coming from the cloud, and he said, This is my beloved Son. Whose voice are you hearing? You're hearing God's voice. So God speaks. He says, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The last three words, Hear ye him. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. Verse 8. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. One look, and the only one they saw was Jesus Christ. One look, and the only one they saw was Jesus. Peter, James, and John of the inner circle, so to speak, of the disciples of Jesus. They saw His glory. They saw it shining like the brightness of the sun. White and glistering, as it says in another passage. And they were never the same after that moment. Never the same when they, when they got their eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. And can I say this? The way to sanctification, the way to being set apart for God, is to get your eyes off man and keep your eyes on Christ. You have to keep focused on Jesus Christ. Not on Moses and not on Elijah even, but on Jesus. And keep your eyes fixed on Him. They didn't say they saw each other. It didn't say they saw Elijah. It just simply said they saw Jesus. And by the way, who are we following? We're supposed to be following Jesus Christ. How many times do I run into folks when you're visiting and you've, done, you've had the same experience and well, so-and-so in the church said this, or a pastor did this one time, or a deacon did this one time, or somebody in the church. Who, who are your eyes on? Guess what? People will say hurtful things. Okay? People will say bad things. And by the way, there's times you'll say bad things. And there's times you may say hurtful things, even if it's unintentional. And you may hurt somebody without realizing it. But listen, keep your eyes on Christ. What has Jesus done to you? See? What, what, what wrong has He done? Every one of us could say with Pilate, I find no fault in Him. He's perfect. He does all things well. And so it only took one look, and they saw the truth. They saw the light. They they, they, they understood what it was to follow Jesus Christ and keep their eyes on Him. It's, it's exactly what happened when Peter got out and started walking on the water. Man, he could, he could walk on water. Do you understand? That's, that's sort of a miraculous thing. Huh? I, do, I do one thing in water pretty well. That's sink. Okay? And, and you don't just walk on top of the water. Peter did. How did he do that? He kept his eyes on Jesus Christ. When he took his eyes off Christ and started looking at the wind and the waves and all that was going on, down he went. What happens in your life when you get your eyes off Jesus? You, you, you sink pretty fast. And you, you're going to get discouraged and disillusioned and, and, and all kinds of uh, 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 almost depression can come when you get your eyes off Christ. You, you cannot look at other people. You'll, you'll never be set apart for His service. You have to understand sanctification. Sometimes we think, well, I'm justified by faith, but I'm sanctified by my works. That's not what the Bible teaches. We're still sanctified by faith. You got saved looking to Jesus, and as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. You still walk after Christ, by keeping your eyes on Him and keep following Jesus and keep your eyes on Him alone. So what's the first thing you do every morning? Now wait a minute. Don't say anything out loud. What's the first thing you do in the morning? Restroom? Well, after that. Mouthwash? Or give your spouse mouthwash? Mouth Get the coffee on? 
Grab your smartphone or your iPad. David said this, My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and look up. The very first look you ought to have every day is the look to Jesus. What? It fixes your look for the day. And it fixes your look where it needs to be. Don't, don't set your sights on the things of the earth or the people of the earth. Set your sights above. Set your sights on Jesus. When you see when you fix your eyes on Christ, then you begin to see things through His eyes. And you'll see people as He sees them. What did Jesus say to see, for His disciples to see the fields white unto harvest? Before He said, you'll see the fields white unto harvest, He told them what? Lift up your eyes. You've got to look. You've got to look higher. You've got to look through His eyes. And then you'll see the fields are white unto harvest. Then you'll see people as eternal souls that are going to live somewhere forever. And they need to know about Christ. One look brought condemnation. One look brought justification. One look can bring sanctification. And then let's say this. One look can bring glorification. 1 John 3 and verse 2. 1 John 3 and verse 2. Are you all right? Are you okay? 1 John 3 verse 2. The Bible says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Well, that kind of does away with people who think you can't know you're saved now, right? Now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, watch it, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. One look. One look. When we see Him, we shall be like Him. For we'll see Him as He is. One look will bring our glorification, and that's when He comes back for us. And we go to be with Him. This corruptible will put on incorruption. This mortal will put on immortality. See? And we're going to be with Him, and we shall be like Him. The curse will be lifted. The power and the temptation of sin will be gone. All sickness will be eliminated. Death will be swallowed up in victory, 1 Corinthians 15 tells us. Disappointment, discouragement will evaporate. All lust and greed and malice and jealousy and heartache, they'll be gone forever. What a day that'll be. No wonder Titus said, I'm looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what we're looking for. Hey, you say, what about all this stuff going on in the world? And this world is in a mess. Uh, right is wrong and wrong is right. It's all turned upside down. You say, what in the world are we to do? Hey, I don't know about you, but I'm lifting up my head for my redemption draws nigh. Surely we're in the last days. What a day that'll be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon His face the one who saved me by His grace. And He takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Well, I've got a longing. I'm homesick to go. To a land of no more heartache, no more sorrow or woe. And there's nothing that can hold me in this world below. For I'm homesick for heaven, I've a longing to go, a longing to go. A longing to go. I have a longing, a longing to go. When the trumpet 
will sound for those mansions on high. I'll leave without saying goodbye. And it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Amen. One look will bring glorification when we see Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you for the truth this morning. Thank you that you made it to where we can just have one look. One look brought condemnation, but we're thankful in the good news that one look can bring our justification, our salvation. And one look is able to bring us sanctification, set apart, keeping our eyes on Jesus as we go through this world. And one day, we'll be glorified because we shall see you. And we will be like you, for we shall see you as you are. Thank you, Jesus, for one look. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. We're going to have our invitation. Right now, just between you and God, I wonder how many folks here this morning would be like Charles Spurgeon that we talked about at the beginning of the message. Look to Jesus. And he looked to Jesus that day and received Christ as his Savior. I wonder how many folks in the room would say, Pastor, that's my testimony. I realized one day that I was a lost sinner in need of a Savior, and I knew that Jesus was the Savior I needed. And preacher, there's a day I looked to him and ask Him to save my soul. And I know that I have eternal life. I know Jesus is my Savior. Would you slip your hand up for a moment as a testimony to that? And say, Pastor, I know that I'm saved. All right, you may put it down. You're here today when say, Preacher, I, I don't know that for sure. I, I don't know. I don't know any time in my life when I really looked to Jesus and said, Save my soul. Save me from my sins. My friend, Jesus... You know, the Bible says, Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. God sent you a Savior. You need a Savior. I wonder if you're here today and say, I've, I've never trusted Jesus as my Savior, but Pastor, pray for me today. Just let me pray for you. I'm not going to embarrass you. We're not going to call you out. But I'll certainly pray and ask God to continue to move your heart. Would you lift your hand up right now and say, Pastor, pray for me this morning? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Say, Pastor, pray for me today. I'm not sure. Christ is my Savior. I'm just not sure about that. But pray for me. I couldn't lift it the first time, but I'll lift it this time. Don't wait till it's too late. Hell, I believe, is full of people who fully intended to be saved. They just didn't want to do it now. And then it was too late. Don't let it be too late for you. I wonder how many believers here today would say, Preacher, God dealt with my heart today. I'm thankful. Maybe it's just gratitude that it was one look that you could say, be saved. Maybe you, you realize this morning that it's one look. Maybe for sanctification that you, your eyes have been on other people. Your eyes so easily get on the cares of this life. And you get so focused on the wrong things. Instead of keeping your eyes on Jesus. And realize I need to keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of the faith. I wonder how many Christians here today would say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart about that. Pray for me today. Would you slip your hand up? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's good. You may put them down. One look will bring glorification. One day we're going to see him. Maybe today. Maybe today we'll see him. Are you looking for him to come? Are you looking for the blessed hope? Would, it, would you try to make it a conscious thought? Would you begin your day each day looking unto Jesus? Fix your eyes upon him and be looking for him to return. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have your invitation. God has spoken to your heart this morning. I want you to respond to him. If you're here today and you've never received Christ as your Savior, Christians will be coming to pray. Just slip from your seat. I'll meet you here at the front. We have people who have been trained. They'll take a Bible and they'll show you how you can know you're on your way to heaven. 
you're here today and you're saved and you've never been scripturally baptized, you ought to come and say, Pastor, I need to be baptized. If you're saved and you're scripturally baptized and you say, this, I believe, preacher, this is where we ought to go to church. This is where we ought to serve the Lord. Then you come and present yourself for membership this morning. Whatever it is that God's dealing with your heart about, I simply want you to obey Him and respond to Him today. Heavenly Father, thank You for speaking to hearts this morning. Thank You, Lord, for Your Word and for using Your Word in the hearts and lives of Your people today. And now, Father, I pray that each one would obey what the Spirit is prompting them to do. Lord, I pray that You would keep our eyes fixed upon Thee as we go through this life we run our race that we'd be looking unto Jesus so please Lord have your way in this invitation and work in each and every heart and I'll thank you for it with your heads bowed you stand to your feet as you stand to your feet our pianist will play as she plays the invitation hymn God has spoken to your heart I want you to respond to him this morning will you please that's right that's right seated for a minute if you would please good to have Jenny Ponder coming this morning Jenny has received Christ as her Savior and uh, she's coming today to be baptized and follow the Lord in baptism and uh, we're happy about that Jenny God bless you Mrs. Wallace is going to take you downstairs and she'll get you all set get you ready to baptize uh, did uh I'm sent for Andy to come over. Andy's going to come over and lead you in some songs. I, he doesn't know it. He just found out about it. <laughs> did Brother Bob, did they take uh, Mary Ann? Does anybody know that? They did? Okay. Mary Ann took a fall in the nursery and hurt her wrist. And uh, they said they might have to take her over to the hospital and get an x-ray and see what's going on. And uh, plus, Bob's throat is very bad this morning. So pray for him and, uh, and pray for little Mary Ann, if you will. Andy, come on up. You're going to lead music. You didn't know that, but... Here we go. Everything will be in the key of bass, all right? But uh, you just throw one out at him and let him, let him go with it, all right? And uh, you lead the music while we get ready to baptize, okay? You need a book, do you? Uh, the red, blue book, all right? Get a 
book, and uh, we'll get ready to baptize Jenny, and uh, you enjoy singing till then. Brother Andy? Great. Awesome. Well, I just came from junior church, so we could sing a, a children's song. No. <laughs> no, anyone got a favor here? Brother Pete? 488. And you got to yell at me, too, because I can't hear you. All right. A new name in glory. Amen. First one, here we go. I was once a sinner, but I came pardon to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that he always kept his word. There's a new name written down in the grave, and it's mine, oh yes, it's time up here, right?
upon the public profession of your faith in Christ as your Savior and in obedience to his command. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of Jesus' death and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. <laughs> And the servant said, Master, it has done us house commanded, and yet there is room. I'm picking one here. 341. We're going to sing this. 341. 341. Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. There we go. I heard the story. How a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I
right. Let's stand together. We'll have a word of prayer. Thank you, Andy. Stay. No, don't go anywhere. Andy, you got to lead the closing song after we pray, all right? <laughs> Let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for a wonderful morning this morning. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord today. Pray your blessing on each one, and as we leave this place today, make us mindful that you go with us. May we please you in all we do today. Thank you, Lord, for Jenny and for her faith in Christ and her obedience to you this morning. Continue to use and bless her life, Lord, to influence others for Christ. Keep her looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of her faith. Lord, dismiss us now with your care, please. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. All right, see you I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been God bless you. You're dismissed.